Hi everybody and welcome back to Sand in Junction. This is my follow up to my flocking disaster and I'm hoping it will be my flocking triumph. <laughs> so let's roll it in and let's see what happens. Hi everybody and welcome back to Sanding. Now as I said at the start, hot on the hills of my disaster movie of last month, I am bringing you, I hope, the sequel, which will be The Triumph and the Phoenix Rising from the Ashes. Now I've got to say in the last video I made so many schoolboy errors and most of it was down to the application, got to be said, but uh, that came up from two points. I went in with the thought that it would be um, okay to put acrylic paint down but I then had a suspicion about the fact that I put it down very neat and no water and it just I don't think it allowed the glue to stick and someone else suggested that and there was also the suggestion that I hadn't grounded my probe into the surface or into some other material such as the glue to allow the conductivity and for the fibers to sit in the glue properly and although there were also arguments that I'd gone too large with areas I really didn't I didn't glue that much too far at any one time but I think maybe the fact that the surface of the paint was not allowing it to do what it should have done it was skinning up a little bit quick and I hadn't got the probe in I think it's a combination of several things but that's all gone. Why am I dressed like this? I hear you ask yourself on my light hat on in my room. The heater's on. Well, unfortunately on Saturday I went down with COVID and I tested positive. So I've got a lot of time on my hands. I'm absolutely uh, locked down in here. Well, not in here. Well, I expect my wife would like me locked down in here. But hey-ho, that's the way it is. I will get over that and I just feel that I wanted to come out and do a little bit of filming and a bit more work on the layout so that's what I've done so I'm going to make a start on this now I have already been doing a bit and that will follow on in the video shortly I have gone over the ground and I have laid the soil the sieved soil I have um, put that with some um, tile grout and I have put it on, glued it down and gone over it with 50-50 uh, PVA and some uh, isopropanol to allow it to go in, excuse me, <laughs> and um, yeah so this part of it's been done, you'll see me doing bits of that in the course of the start of the video and I've also got a little section in the video where I've just got myself one of those WWS flock boxes those little pro boxes that I can make tufts with and you'll see that that didn't go without some problems <laughs> but that's for further in you'll get to that bit but uh, yeah I think we won the day with that one as well but I just wanted to show you me making a few flock uh, a few sort of tufts of grass that I, I used to make them years ago and in my sort of non even more non-knowledgeable days uh, when I was doing uh, No Name Junction I did attempt some and they were okay but um, I didn't think about colours and things like that I just went for it and, and came up with what I did I just actually found them so I shall show you a few of those in the videos and I am working very closely to the video as I've already told you in the last video that uh, Tim has put out um, on Scrapline and uh, it's number 15 I think it is but he's got so many on there well worth looking at you'll learn so much from him and uh, you know he's got some great tips and great tricks and you get also to know the sort of products that he's using and uh, yeah you can mimic it well you do if you listen to it <laughs> I have listened to it several times excuse me <coughs> um, but yeah um, <laughs> I didn't listen to it last time, not enough anyway. So I'm going to make that a correction and we're going to get on with this now. So without further ado, before I ramble on and make this a 24 hour video marathon, which I'm sure none of you want more than about 20 minutes really, uh, I'm going to crack on and see what happens. So 
there you go catch you all soon by the time you see this i hopefully it will be over the covid bit so not to worry I, i'm sure i hope everything's fine i wish each and every one of you health and fun take care people catch you soon mod podge glue and i'm going to put this all over the area that i want to start with is I'm using sieved dirt from the garden. And that's exactly what this is. And again, you know, I knew this. Uh, I had this two years ago and uh, I was using it in other bits and pieces. Why I absolutely forgot that, I will not know. But anyway, never mind. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna be replacing the surface with dirt Okay, I'm just going to pat, pat it in, make it grip a bit more. I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing. It seems a logical thing just to press it into the surface a little bit. Now I'm going to do this in little areas because obviously the PVA at uh, the um, ISO will evaporate away. So I'm just gonna do maybe this amount to start with, make that nice and wet, and then I'm just gonna drop a, this all over. Okay, everybody. Well, last week I managed to get whatever little bits of earth that I had remaining from previous projects down on the layout, and it's all glued down. It's gone off, and it's really quite nice. And I'm going to add to that. Now, what I've done is the last week I actually picked up some dirt from the garden. It's been sitting in the airing cupboard all week. It's still not perfectly dry, but I think it's dry enough to put through a sieve and get some more material. Here. So that's what I'm going to do and it's a worthwhile project to do in the summer of course when the dirt is quite dry and uh, this part of the process is speeded up because I'm going to try and get it all dried out. So uh, food for thought for the future but I will carry on with this and see what we can produce and then I can carry on uh, adding. And you can see there's a very very fine uh, layer of debris and dirt. You can see all the um, bits of uh, fibrous material in there that have broken off and come free but that is a very very fine dusty scatter and that's ideal for just topping off so I'm going to put that out of the way save that and gives me a nice I like the look of that that looks good okay it's slightly different color earth to this one if I feel that it's too different when I go further along I can actually just blend some of that in and across so that it doesn't really make a big difference. OK, 
and there's quite a bit of material there and there's quite a bit of the larger. You can see the difference between the two areas. So we can leave that and save that and we can then add this to our growing pot of dirt here. I'm going to lose any. Okay, so having done all the other soil over at Sandling and around to the corner and the river area, I want to get this covered. I do want to get rid of this green. Got to be said, hate the green. Uh, so I'm going to cover this. I've sieved more dirt, fine dirt. So I'm going to cover the whole of this area and um, let that dry out for the next few days. And so that will be ready to do some static grass effects on later on. Okay, so now all that dirt texture has dried off, I decided to make a fresh start on the sidings at Sandling. Now, this area is the one that I messed up last time. I'm using some underbrush. I didn't have any of the coarse turf. Both of them are flocking or foam flock and work just as well. This is just a little bigger. I put it around and spaced it out and tried to make it look as natural as I could. I used some fine turf in one of these Woodland Scenics blenders, shakers, and that works extremely well. There are several ways of delivering it out, small, medium holes, etc. But it does work well. Now the blended turf I used as well, I use quite a bit less of it because it is quite light in tone, has to be used fairly sparingly. But I got all this area set up ready to put some grasses in further along. And what I'm gonna be doing once I finish this part is just wetting it all up, I've covered the tracks over. I'm using a little bit of the knock uh, brown scatter that I had. I don't know where I got that from, but I've had a long time. But now I'm just gonna glue it all down, let it settle down and get ready for some uh, flock grass. Hi everybody, welcome back. Now I have started this area and I have laid the first part of the ground cover down. I haven't gone blazing in with tons of grass. I've looked at uh, Tim's video among others and uh, just see where I want to go. But I had to use underbrush here. Unfortunately I didn't have the smaller uh, coarse turf but I have some of that on order but I felt along this area it could have been a neglected embankment so 
I am quite happy that the underbrush is there. It's uh, not like small bushes, so it's somewhere in between the two. And I don't think it will be too high. But we're going to put some grasses on here now. I'm going to start off with some 6mm straw and work my way down to a little bit of a mix with some 4mm and some uh, lush green and some straw, all from the green scene. So that's what I'm working with. And hopefully we'll get it right this time. We shall see. I'll catch you all later. Hey, finally, we got some success. Everything seems to be staying put, which is always a good sign. One or two fibers are coming off uh, where they didn't quite stick. They were just laying in with another one. But essentially, we have got good cover. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in with some 4 millimeter around the peripheral edges of this. I'm going to make it a little bit of a, a lush green and a straw mix, so it's not quite one or the other and then we'll come down with a little bit of the green further in other places. So yeah, there we go, let's get started.
Hi everybody, well I did say I'd talk to you about this little contraption here. This is that Pro Box from WWS and it's a great piece of kit. It's not a great big platform but I think it's more than enough to do the jobs you need it to do. And I had uh, a couple of goes at this and I've done quite well in the end. I'm quite happy with the result. These are some of the tufts that I've made. Now what you do have to bear in mind I think are that you need this on waxy paper this is like baking parchment i tried it on some grease proof paper and it was awful i tried it on plastic of course that was a no-go as well so i found this is you need something that will hold it all but it will peel off without any problems just like that and there is a grass tuft now these are irregular shapes it doesn't really matter they're not too dissimilar to ones i made many years ago very similar process similar color even so all of these i made in odd shapes odd ways so that i can employ them in various different parts of the layout and cut them up and tear them about and these will just go in and join with the others a grounding sheet in a sense now this is just a piece of old board that i've covered up into a piece of um foil and i use the pegs just to hold a piece of paper so if i've got this on there I can hold this on so I don't have to worry about that and of course I can then put the grounding uh, crocodile clip there all my glue is ready to go all I then got to do is turn it upside down with my flock one thing I will say though whatever you do if you're not using protective gloves then do not have this in your hand or indeed even this is not sure to stop it so do not have this and get near this at the same time what I started doing is I'm using these cheaper household uh, marigold gloves. They are very insulative and I was able to do all of the things that I wanted to do without fear of jumping every two minutes. But I assure you, it does pack a wallop. Um, it's not deadly to you, I guess not good if you've got any uh, mechanics in your body to keep your body going. I wouldn't recommend it then. But certainly, if you are just doing what I've been doing, then I think we have um, just a little bit of protection will mean to say that you can go through a whole series of this. Good piece of kit. Not too cheap, but not too bad either when you consider what everything else in this hobby costs. So not a bad product and it will serve you well to do lots of different things in the future. Okay, what I will do before I finish is just add to some of this. Now, this is not very good stuff. This is old Jeep. I don't know where it come from, but uh, it's not very good color. But I've been using it to experiment, to try out, and to play around with this. So I'm going to use some of this 4 millimeter green stuff. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a pile. So I'm going to put that on there. And as I said before, I am wearing these... Um, insulated gloves because trust me if you start using this without it won't be too many minutes before you jump in your car and chase down to the local supermarket and buy yourself some insulated gloves it's uh it is just like that all right let's take some of this tackyish glue from uh, green scenes and it is proving its worth so i've got to say that let's get an old brush for the job there we go. Okay, I'm just going to sort of literally scratch over some of this like that. And hopefully, hopefully, and I've never done it in this way before, so this is fairly new for me, but I'm just going to put some of this on different places. As we'll do this last one. There we go. Brushed over that. Put that to one side. Now then I'm going to attach this to my board. I'm going to literally do as I showed you just now, put that on there, support it on this side as well, and then put the connector on. I found that the best way that this works is to have the whole of this panel about an inch or so above. It doesn't want to really be much more than that. So now let's turn this on. And you can see the fibers jumping everywhere. Let's get this going and I'll show you the result in a minute. I can see them moving. Pass it over fairly slowly so that the grasses get a chance to grab in. 
and fire into the glues. But I think we've got some nice height tufts there. Now if you had much longer grasses you could actually put a little spot of glue in and uh, increase the height even more. But I think we've done quite well. I think it's quite nice. I'm going to probably do a couple more of the other sheets and uh, yeah, let them all dry off and, and uh, put them to good use in time. Hey Harry, welcome back. Just a very quick update on these tufts. Now I had several going and this is how the first lot ended up just very very thin two millimeters over them I went over and put a little bit of four mil on and then I had some old uh, four millimeter sort of burnt stuff so I just went over again could be construed a little too high but you know you do get some very marshy areas in places where reedy stuff grows up and I think that they'll be acceptable Definitely using parchment paper, um, waxed paper is far the best way to go. These things just literally pop off, whereas before I just could not get them uh, to part from the surface. And even this one, I think possibly is a little bit thin, maybe. Yeah, probably not going to give way too easily. Oh, even that sort of peeled back. loads in there for future use and they will start appearing on the layout very very soon hi guys welcome back just wrapping this video up and as you can see i'm happily over covid which is a plus plus with the layout i got so far with the scenics and i stopped i needed some more products they have arrived now so i've got more options moving forward as i lay more uh, scenic areas on sanding junction and at the same time, I stopped short of putting any trees or bushes into the area that I've just done. The reason being, I looked over all the old ones that I had from No Name Junction. Many of those I made myself, but I know a little bit more nowadays. And they didn't look that great, and they didn't sort of travel that well, as it were. So I've decided not to use most of that. And I'm going to make my own ones in the future so there will be videos on that on how I approach that subject so look out for those and it just remains for me to say all the best people take care have fun stay safe enjoy your layouts see you in the next one bye bye